So stand for a moment before, before we actually start to move, just thinking about the, uh, the, the basic posture that we work from the majority of the exercises, really. Peter hit with the park to give you the, the, the space to, 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 to settle down. And if you think, I'm going to go a little bit wider, actually. If you think of, of your pelvis sort of hanging down between your legs, then the more space there is, the, 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 the easier that's going to be. Wait just a little bit forwards. And uh, no, I've, I've exaggerated that, but then sinking back, softening in, in, in the knees. And that helps the, the, the drop in of your centre. And turning just a little in the middle of your body. Just enough to get your arms moving. And there's a slight pull on your arms. That, that sense of a pull, the, the image that we use mostly in Tai Chi is that you're, you're moving through water or some kind, some kind of denser medium than, than, than the air around you, although the air around you is thicker than normal, I say sometimes. But I think for most people, the image of moving through water is a, a good one. Partly because we know that when we're in water, if we're stiff and tight, then it just gets to be harder work. And partly because it offers the right kind of resistance. Not, it's not like kind of trying to push through a wall or something like that. It's actually um, softer than, 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 than that but still requires your body to move in a way that uses more of the body. Something we do quite automatically, probably at least once a day, but you know, like going, you know, you're going to pick up a bag that you think is, 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 is going to be light to pick up, you go, to, oh, no, there's something in it. Okay, so then you pull it again, or and you move slightly differently, or you go to open a door that you think is loose and it's sticking for some reason, so you try again and you use more, more, more of your body. This is quite natural for most of us. And a lot of the movements in Tai Chi are, if you like, natural. One of the problems that we encounter is that we're trying to do it quite slowly and with awareness. So if you think about a relatively simple task like tying a shoelace, an, 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 an everyday event, or um, even turning the tap on or something like that. You, know, you go up to the tap, you turn it on. But then if you're in a hotel or something like that, you go up to the tap and you turn it on and you realise you turned the wrong way. Or uh, I know there's all sorts of, var of, of, of variations. And if you had to describe it to somebody, it's quite difficult to say, well, what you have to do is, uh, Two times, you put your left over the right and you tuck it under. It's, it's a really difficult thing to actually describe. It's a difficult thing to think about. Whereas if you're in a house, it's to put your shoes on. Well, here we go, 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 and, go and catch the train sort of thing. So as soon as we bring our awareness into everyday movements and activities, and this would include our breathing, it, it, it becomes more difficult, partly because our awareness slips and partly because our awareness is usually not developed enough to take on board massive detail. And so this is where quality of intent comes in. And it's also where it's very important in Tai Chi to really think about the basics. These are the, the, the the core ingredients in our practice, posture, positioning, posture and stance. So posture and also exactly where the feet are and so on and so forth. Sinking, rooting down, aligning. Moving with the whole body. Mostly that's, you know, we, we, we would move with the whole body just walking down the road to the shops or something like that. But again, when, when 
when you bring your awareness in into the movement and you start to think about it, and if you try to describe it, if you've ever, as I have, tried to teach somebody how to ride a bike, you know, so how do you do it? Well, how do you do this? It's interesting. How do you do it? Sort of thing. It's it just be, it's it's, a, it's an intuitive thing. That's a, a process that takes time and uh, practice. But eventually, those 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 ingredients, as it were, those elements become quite natural to the way that you move. So if it gets to the point, perhaps where you're you're doing something different. Um, as I've done at times, a different movement, a dance, or something like that, then you know, you, you, it's difficult to understand unless I can find a, a sort of what, what I might call a Tai Chi perspective on it. Now, turn in your hands, palm, palm up, elbows are hanging down, so you can feel the weight of your arms on your, your shoulders. And as you do this, just start to rotate your arm. So as far as far a range as, as you can without straining, it's just a very simple movement. But see if you can begin to notice changes. I, I, I notice it most in my sides, but you might notice it somewhere else. It's not so much what the movement is as learning to direct your attention to these things. We often don't pay this close attention to our bodies and our movements, but we can train ourselves to, to, to do that. As we do in almost all activities, somebody who plays a, a lot of music will go to the same concert that I go to, but notice very different things because they've trained themselves to just be aware in 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 a different way and you know, most of us have some kind of speciality you've got the things things that we engage with and that we just know more about basically because we've trained ourselves to notice it let your hands drop down so just stand in and appreciating this posture one of the terms used for the sort of feel of this posture, some of its qualities, is central equilibrium. Uh, the Chinese term is zhongding, and it's often translated as central equilibrium. As always, there are other translations you, you could use. But if, if we're familiar with this feeling, then we begin to realize as we go through the different exercises, this is what we're trying to reproduce within the exercises. So we have to think about how we're moving. And we want to move with this sense of connection. We want to move with our root down and so on and so forth. And in Tai Chi, we would always start with feet and legs. And in, in, in these exercises, with our hips sinking down and pushing up. Arms are down by your sides. And if you look at my fingers, they're spread out a little bit and they're, they're, they're not straight and rigid, but they're, they're, they're straight with a slight curve. And one of the images that I think is quite interesting to use with this is that to imagine that your fingers are pressing down into soft mud. So there's a little bit of resistance, not, not enough to make you strain again in both directions. When we start to do this, we start to become aware of a sensation of movement within our arms, even though all we're doing is maintaining a, a position with them. So there's a movement and energy in our arms. And when we bring our arms more actively in, into the movement, basically what we're trying to do is to take the energy that's already there and bring it into a shape to kind of mold it gently. So now bringing your hands around as though you're cradling the ball, pushing up, feeling your upper body expand, pushing your arms up and then sinking down. Just taking time with the sinking down until you feel that there's a little bit of a push up. And here, 
you start to be aware of the pull down, particularly through your hips. So just as there was a sensation of movement through our arms a few moments ago, so now you may just be able to identify a similar kind of feeling in our back and our spine, maybe elsewhere in the body, but back and spine are particularly good to focus on at this point. And then contracting. And expanding and contracting. You may find that your breathing follows that pattern quite naturally. If it doesn't, then continue to breathe how your body wants to breathe rather than uh, some kind of system dictates that you ought to breathe. And then change into the wild goose. Humans of the bird in flight, or sometimes I think of this as like having a feather in one of my hands and just waving the feather up and down in, in, in the air. Feathers are a good example of the quality that we look for. They're quite strong, and yet they will always give against the resistance of the air. Quite light, they're hollow. The other thing about feathers, of course, here, the feather will be being held, so it's sort of like flat, flat up and down, if you like. But then when we change to part in the clouds, this will be more like the edge of the feather. So there would actually be less resistance because the feather would cut through the air. Trying to bring in that awareness of small movements, small changes, not in the sense of trying to make them happen, but rather in, a, in it, through this process of observing what is actually happening. And in the long term effect of that is that those movements become more important, they become amplified in a sense. So going back to the first of these, rooting down and do these three movements as a sequence. So in feet, legs and hips, the movement is the same, but we begin to become aware of changes in the upper part of our body. Of course, there are changes in what the arms are doing. There's also changes in <coughs> the imagery. <coughs> Excuse me. And so we can begin again to just train ourselves to recognize these very subtle differences.
One more round. And then change into dragon plucks the stars in the sky. Feeling that expansion also through one side of your body. Although your arm is going up, what you're not going to do is just stretch right up like this. Just notice the, the curve, the bend in the elbow. Try not to lift your shoulder. Pushing up. The top of the movement, you wind your hand around. The movement comes from the shoulder. Remember, when, when we always talk about rotating the arm, it's the same kind of rotation. So you want to try and get your hand to a position where that is possible. Don't, for instance, uh, don't sort of do this, leaning backwards. Now that rotation is quite tight. One more of these yeah, on each side. Now, first and the last are pushing in four directions. So, just a little bit above your head. And again, there's that rotation through your arms. And again, it's not, it's not a high movement. And as always, we go to a point where we feel that we could have moved a little bit further. And again, looking to maintain a posture that means that we're not tight in our shoulders. So that rotation is quite a strong rotation. And then this time, turning a little. Don't turn too far. Remember, right at the beginning, we did the swing and exercises. It was quite a small movement in the center of the body. One more round.
and then the hands drop down and then circling palms. Again, expanding through with just one side of your body. If it's comfortable, you can add a turn in as when your hand reaches the top of the movement. Change the other side. And if it's comfortable, add in the turn. Now, row in a boat in the middle of the lake. Sink down, push up on your arms coming out. And then as you sink down again, you probably push your hips back a little bit. Be careful of your knees and your back. And then letting your hips drop down to bring yourself, your head and shoulders up right, and then push them again. So we're very much moving from the center of our body. And then polishing the table, we turn horizontally and then push the hips back again. Turn horizontally to swing the arms around. Back to the start, change direction. One more time in each direction.
we need to come back to the standing position and just you know, notice how it feels, if it feels different before we did the exercises. Might be physical changes, might be changes in your awareness, maybe you're just more settled in your, your body. Most likely a combination of the two. Staying in the parallel stance for, for a moment, maybe a little bit wider. I, I, I quite like to do this, these, these next exercises a, a little bit wider. So with this stance, there's, there's some variation in, 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 in how people do it. You can go very wide and go down a long way. Um, it's not necessary for, for, for these exercises. Um, just, just so that you can get a little bit of sideways movement. When we do this, we need to think about how much of the weight is moving. So I'm just going from here to here. If I go to here, you can see this hip is starting to come out of line. This, this, this leg is starting to straighten up. Other, other areas that, that I think are quite tricky about this, it's easy to do this or this. This is very common because we naturally think about our shoulders first. And so when, when, when we're here, before we start moving, 50% of our weight is in each leg. But as we start to move, I'm moving to this leg, and there's now 60% of my weight in this leg. So it's just 10% of, of, of the weight. So do this a few times. And then, Come across into say your right leg so you can mirror my movements and just push the left knee forwards. I'm exaggerating this, it shouldn't go forwards that much. It goes forwards and this hip, the left hip, drops down, but your heel will come up. So more of your weight can now go across. So I get to here 60%, I push the knee forwards, I go to more like 70 or 80%. And you can see what this is doing is bringing my um, upper body more and more above what will be my supporting leg. So I really want to avoid things like this or this. And eventually I can get to a point where I'm here, and I bring this foot in and you can see I'm now in line over my left leg. And step out, move across. Push your knee forward, sink into my right leg, so your left leg, and you bring the foot in. So now, pretty much, you've got 100% of your weight on the supporting leg. And you may even find that having brought the foot in, you can do this, just raise the knee a little bit. Keeping your pelvis level, hips level, shoulders level. and shake out. We're, we're, we're going to come back to that in, in, in a few moments, or we're going to include that in, in, in the next exercise. There's one thing to think about. Well, if you're trying to get to here, say with, with the knee up, don't do this, because <laughs> now I'm, 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 I'm already falling over. And try to get my hands out, try not to do this, because now I'm already falling over, or this, this and so on and so forth. So the qualities that we look for in the initial parallel stance, central equilibrium and the alignment of the body and the rooting down are simply transferred to one leg. Simple enough, but, but actually very difficult, especially when we start to use our arms as well, because as soon as we start to think about that, we're more likely to throw the, the, the upper body out of line. So in that slightly wider stance, we're going to do the, the, the exercise stretch in between heaven and earth. Start off without the weight moving. Hold a ball with your right hand on top, your left hand underneath. 
and then push your hands together so that they slide past each other. And now it's a stretch in between heaven and earth. So bottom hand's pushing down towards the ground, top hand up towards the ceiling. Turn your hands, let them slide past each other. Sink down just a little bit and then push it up. Slight diagonal line between the hands. Then we can start to bring in a weight change and just take this to whatever point is useful to you. So this time, as you push up, you move your weight across just a little bit, 60%. And this is where we want to be really aware of what we're doing in, in the upper body. What I don't want to be doing is this. I want to maintain that line through my body, through my upper body. This time, when you go into your left, yeah, start to push the right knee inward so you can move across a little bit more. And then to see how it feels to bring your foot in. Notice that when I bring my foot in, I'm not throwing my body out. So it's quite strong in the muscles around your legs and your hips, particularly the adductor muscles that bring the leg inwards and the abductor muscles on the outside of the thigh that draw them outwards. Notice that I'm sinking down a little bit as I take the step. Go back. Then you can start to just raise the knee a little bit if it suits you. in between heaven and earth. More time. and shake it. Now, one foot forwards and begin to transfer your weight forwards and backwards. Keep the width of the step. Notice the space between my feet. I haven't gone like this, because now this, this closes off this, this, this whole area. And it also starts to feel really quite precarious because you know, it's, all, it's not trying to balance on a log or something like that. So make sure you give yourself adequate space again. The length of the step, not over long, 
because you want to move the weight smoothly. But on the other hand, not so sure that it's very hard to feel the difference between one foot and another and the transition. Generating the movement, generating the energy from your feet and using this sinking down in, in, in the leg to load the leg. So if you imagine that what you're doing is sinking down into a trampoline or a bouncy castle, it gives your hips and knees soften and then you feel the push and you direct that push into, into the other leg. So rather than thinking, well, I've got to go forwards now, you wait until you feel the movement. And then just raising your toes and your heel. And then stepping in. Again, hips, pelvis, level as much as possible. It's one of the reasons we want to take a shorter step because to take a longer step would involve angling pelvis and upper body. And then on the other side, this is a valuable exercise to, 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 to practice regularly. It can have a huge impact on our mobility. It's also good because again, there's plenty of time, it's very simple, plenty of time for reflection on you know, feeling what's happening in legs, back, around the hips and buttocks. Raising toes and heel. Again, with the back knee, it will just bend in. Try not to lock up the front knee. Both movements, both raising your heel and raising your toes, can be associated with a distinct drop in through hips. Very obvious on, on the back leg, but imagine as you go back, if somebody would push in into your hip, you'd do something like that. And again, just stepping in.
and then stepping through. Going back. And bring your feet back. So, in the oops, in the um, in the vertical movements like this one and this one, the um, our hips are sinking up and down. So we get this strong sense of a, an energy of movement coming from the the, the the legs. Something is happening in the horizontal movements that there's this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm dropping into that front leg and it's going to bounce me back. But what it would do is push me up. So we guide the movement through. So it's a, almost like a kind of inverted U shape. We feel the movement coming up through the leg, but trying not to lift the hips over and then down. And the same thing, we wait until we feel the push and the, the movement it effectively does so. Uh, so a series of exercises taking that energy into the upper part of the body, starting with pigeon spread its wings. So have your weight back on your rear leg. Hold your hands over your belly. When you move the weight forwards and backwards in this posture, your arms are moving as well. So again, I'm going to exaggerate a little bit, but as I go forwards, I feel that push coming through that I just described, but it doesn't all go down into the front leg. Some of it comes up into the upper body. And what it does first of all is it moves my elbows. I'll come a bit closer. So there, just like my elbows go out. And then as the elbows go out, it draws the fingers out. It's like there's a ball behind my hands and the ball expands and contracts and then eventually we feel the movement coming up into the chest the pigeon spreads its wings So this is a good movement because, and I mean, it's, it's good for the chest, up the back, but also because it's quite a big movement, we can begin to feel the, the connection between what happens in our chest and what happens in our hands, for instance. Some of the following movements, they're sort of smaller, a little bit more subtle than that. One more time. And then changing. Fisherman cast the net.
One more time. And then pushing wave. Weight goes back. Weight goes forwards. And then this time, <clears throat> as your weight goes back, you turn, that brings your hand across your body and the circular movement, they swing up and then you go forwards and turn and that draws your hand down towards the front head. Turn a little bit further and then back. And shake it. Excellent. So same exercises on the other side. Just have your so this should be your left foot sinking back and again, hands on your belly, just going forwards and backwards, feeling the connection from between the transfer of your weight and belly and chest and arms and hands, and just letting the movement. Push your elbows out a little bit, push your elbows forwards and draw them back. Remember, weight goes forwards, weight goes back. And eventually, your elbows go out so far that they separate your hands. Vision spreads its wings. So we have that feeling of moving through water. And then hands dropping down, fisherman cast the net.
changing now to pushing wave. Same idea that the movement from your legs is pushing your arms forwards. And because of the shape of the arm and because they're being pushed away from the body, they will inevitably go up. One more time. And then as you come back, you simply turn in the center of your body. That's the main change. So quite often when we're presented with you know, a series of exercises, the transition from one to another is actually a lot simpler than we often think it's going to be. Now turn the front foot out a little bit. When you go forwards this time, again, let the back knee lift. So you can bring the foot in, step, place the foot down. I like to have the foot slightly turned out here and go forwards. Because high or low as a step as suits you. Don't let your hands distract you from the alignment of your body, hips, pelvis, shoulders. A strong feeling of your hips dropping back. Change direction. You sit into the supporting leg. Good. Now going forward again or changing direction again, this time if it's comfortable for you, raise and then just push out like you're using your foot to sort of kick a door open or close or something. Push through the heel. When you push out, don't completely straighten the leg. Leave just a little bit of space in your knee. Slight curve there. And then going back. One more time. And bring the feet back. Now then, open your hands together. Tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. Down to one shoulder, your arm. Other side. Down to your hips. Light on your belly, 
in the upper part of the chest. Okay. So coming back to the standing start, and as you're probably realizing by now, this is this is very much the, the foundation for, for everything else, the starting point for everything else. So just sink down a little bit and then push up and just see how that feeling of pulling on your hips and the general feeling of pull of gravity through through, through your body can actually help you to find a way of settling both mind and, and body. The attention that you pay to this is what helps to settle the mind, but it's the actual physical dropping of your center of gravity, the rooting down, that helps to settle the body. Embrace tiger, return to mountain. One more round. And stack. Thank you very much. So that's pretty cool.